In this video, you'll learn how to use Kumo as a Snowflake native app to predict the top 10 purchases your highest value customers, or customers with the highest lifetime value, or LTV, are most likely to buy. This is a companion video to go along with the corresponding quick start, so if you want more details, check out the description and do follow us with the quick start. You predict customer LTV and top 10 purchases by carrying out the following tasks. Setting up your data in Snowflake, registering your schema in Kumo, building your predictive queries, and evaluating your model's performance. You'll also learn how you can productionize your predictive models and clean up and shut down your Kumo native app. This quick start demo uses Snowflake's public TPC DS dataset, which is available directly from Snowflake. To learn more about the dataset, you can go to Snowflake's documentation website. Now let's go ahead and log into our Snowdrift interface and start with setting up our sample dataset in Snowflake. You're going to load the dataset directly into your Snowflake environment using SQL code that we provide you with the quick start. The SQL code will downsample the dataset to streamline the process for demonstration purposes, though in reality, Kumo as a native Snowflake app can scale to billions of rows and terabytes of data. So here's the SQL code you're going to copy and paste into a SQL worksheet inside of Snowdrift. Once you do that, go ahead and run it. When it finishes, you'll see the new Kumo Rec Demo Database under the Databases pane. Next, you'll register your schema in Kumo. You'll need to first start up the Kumo app, so let's go ahead and create a compute pool and launch Kumo. By the way, the instructions for creating the native app, as well as shutting down and cleaning up when you're done, is available under the About the App tab under Data Products, Apps, and Snowdrift. So back at our worksheet here, let's go ahead and start up our compute pool. The full SQL code for doing this is available in your Kumo native app documentation, so you can delve into it in more detail if needed. You'll start the compute pool, wait for it to go into a ready or idle state, then launch the app and wait for the containers to spin up. Once their status turns to ready, you can get the endpoint URL, load it up in your browser, and log into your app. Once you've logged into the Kumo native app, click on Connectors, followed by Configure Connector. In the Snowflake Connector modal window, provide a name for your connector, followed by your account identifier, database, warehouse, schema, and your username and password. Click the Done button, and you should see your new Snowflake connector appear on the Connectors page. Next, click on Tables followed by Connect Table on the top right-hand corner. On the Add Table modal window, make sure the connector you created previously is selected, and click the Source Table drop-down. You'll perform the next set of steps five times, once for each of these tables, starting with the Customer's Mini Table. Select the table from the drop-down, and Kumo will start pre-processing the table columns. Set the C Customer SK column as the primary key, and click the Save button. On the New Tables Detail page, click on the Connect Another Table button, this time select the Customer Demographics table. Set the CD Demo SK column as the primary key and click Save. Click on Connect Another Table and select the Items Mini table. Select the I Items SK column as the primary key and click the Save button. Click the Connect Another Table button and select the Web Sales Mini table. First, uncheck the WS Sold Time SK and W Ship Date SK columns. Next, scroll down and set the D date column as the create date. Click the Save button. Click on Connect Another Table to add your last table, the Website table. Set the Website SK column as the primary key and click on the Save button. You're now ready to move on to the next step, creating your graph. Click on Create Graph on the top right hand corner. On the Graph Setup page, give your graph a name and check the five tables you created previously. Click on the Next button. On the Set Links Between Tables page, create the table linkages as follows. The Website SK column should link to the WS Website SK column. The I Item SK column should link to the WS Item SK column. The CD Demo SK column should link to the C Current C Demo SK column. And the C Customers SK column should link to the WS Bill Customers SK column. If everything looks OK, click on the Complete Graph Creation button to finish creating your graph. Next, click on the Write Predictive Query button to start creating your predictive queries. The first predictive query you'll create is for predicting the lifetime value of your customers. Give your predictive query a name and make sure the graph you created in the previous step is selected. In the Predictive Query text box, insert your PQL statement as follows. Predict sum web sales mini WS EXT sales price 030 for each customers.mini.c customers SK 
or in other words, predict the total amount of sales each customer will make in the next 30 days. Click on the Next button and review your model plan settings and configurations. Click Save and Train to start training your model. Once you've kicked off training, most of the heavy lifting is done. Building this model would have taken days to do manually, but you've done it in a matter of minutes. Once training is completed, you can view the evaluation tab to gauge the accuracy of your model. You can also access your holdout predictions within Snowflake, as well as set up your batch predictions. But we'll skip this step for now and show you how to do that with your next predictive query. Click on the right predictive query button. This time, we're going to create a predictive query to predict the top 10 items your customers are most likely to purchase. Provide a name for your predictive query and select the graph you created previously. Insert the following PQL statement. Predict list distinct web sales mini WS item SK 030 rank top 10 for each customer's mini .sc customers SK. Or predict the top 10 items each of my customers is most likely to purchase in the next 30 days. Click next to review your model plan settings and click save and train to start training your predictive query. Again, once it's done, you can view various evaluation metrics to gauge your model's accuracy. This time, let's go ahead and take a look at the holdout predictions from within Snowflake. You'll need to copy this command under the Evaluation tab and paste it into a Python worksheet in your Snowflake account's Snowdrift interface like this. Click the Run button to read the predictions into a data frame and display it in the results pane. If everything looks OK, you'll want to productionize your model using a batch prediction workflow. This will allow you to kick off your batch prediction jobs at regular intervals on unseen data. From your Predictive Queries detail page, click on Create BP Workflow. Give your batch prediction workflow a name and make sure that the predictive query you created previously is selected. Click the Create button to continue. On your new batch prediction workflow detail page, click on the Run Batch Prediction Job button. Select the connector you created earlier and take note of the table name. This is where your predictions will be stored in Snowflake. Click the Submit button to kick off your batch prediction job. Once it's done, copy the output destination on the batch prediction jobs detail page and run a select on it using a SQL worksheet back in your Snowdrift interface. You'll see our predictions here in the results pane. Congratulations! You've just gone from raw data to predictions in the shortest amount of time possible. Now that we've built the models, you can use them to help send marketing emails to your customers and make sure the recommendations are relevant to them, something that would have taken weeks to achieve without Kumo and Snowflake. So now that you've seen how it's done, go ahead and try it yourself in Snowflake. And when you're all done, you'll want to shut down your Kumo app to avoid accruing metered costs. Go ahead and run the shutdown command provided in the Quick Start to shut down the app.